Now, time tracking is one such feature in Jira that uh, we all use. And uh, when you track time, when you log your work on uh, on your uh, issue, you're basically you're basically telling your manager know that I have spent uh, five hours or two hours or five minutes on this particular activity, and uh, this is this is of course important, especially when you rely on this number to uh, maybe charge your clients or maybe you want this number to uh, to understand how much uh, time your resources are spending on doing work. Now, I was looking at one interesting uh, trigger that uh, you can uh, basically use if you if you do something with uh, the work log. Now, there are uh, three operations or uh, I think a couple of op operations within uh, the work logged. So if you look at this issue trigger called work logged, you can see here that you have three operations. Yes, created, updated and uh, deleted. Now, let us say for some reason you want to know um, or you want to get notified when uh, someone is uh, deleting a work log. Now, for the, for this particular example, I'll uh, not select any operation. I'll just uh, I just want this rule to be triggered whenever uh, uh, you add a new log, work log, or you update or delete, and uh, you can save it. And uh, for accessing the work log, you can uh, use this smart value that uh, is available for you. Uh, you can see here that it. I mean, I mean, if you want to see the details, you can uh, find it here in the smart value documentation I'll copy it and there are quite a lot of things like uh, work log dot comment dot started time spent seconds time spent and so on so this can be interesting because uh, let us say you want to get notified whenever the work log is uh, deleted so maybe you want to know what happened or maybe you want to get notified when the work log is uh, updated and uh, maybe you want your or maybe you, you just want to know uh, any, anything that is happening uh, in your Jira issue related to the time. Now what I'll do, I'll uh, simply uh, do something. For example, I can uh, I can send a notification to uh, Slack, but uh, not really Slack. I may want to just add a comment. I think I can also, I, I, I don't think I have talked about Slack. I think we'll, we'll probably cover it. We'll uh, create one uh, rule and we'll see how it looks like when we send a message to Slack or we, when we want to send a notification to a Slack channel. But for this example, I just want to add uh, a comment. So what I'll do, I'll add a comment and I always use this example because when you when you, um, when you you display the smart values in the comment, it will show you how it looks like and it will give, basically, uh, I think it's a very quick and easy way to test your uh, smart rules work log uh, uh, triggered, I'll simply uh, display it here and uh, let us let us save it. And uh, I will, uh, I will add a, I'll give this, uh, this rule a name work log trigger and turn it on. So let us say if we now go to an issue. So I'll, I'll open one of my issue BT 28. This is my bug. And uh, if I add a new work log, I just want to see how it looks like. So I will uh, try to basically log my time and uh, let me wait for the issue to load completely. So log work. And uh, okay, so I spent maybe two hours on this particular activity and I and, and I did this maybe yesterday. So 21st of December. This is my work log comment. And uh, I think this is good. So let us click on the log. And uh, if I wait for the issue to, to basically wait for the rule to do something or basically run this rule, I will refresh it again. And, uh, and, and I can see, I can see my, uh, my uh, comment here like this is my work log comment and uh, and uh, this is basically a comment that was uh, added 
from my uh, rule. Now, if I show you this uh, this particular uh, smart value, so you can do a few things like work log dot comment, work log log dot dot started. So what I can do, I can pr probably um, use this uh, smart value work, work log dot time spent seconds, or maybe time spent. Let us see. I just want to see how it looks like. So I'll go back to the rule and uh, work log seconds, or rather I should say time spent. I was I was expecting a bit more in the work log, but I think it is just showing the comment. But we can do it again. We can uh, publish the rule again. And uh, if uh, I add a new work log entry, like I spent maybe uh, maybe three hours today and I will uh, click on the log. So we'll wait for the rule to do something to add a comment here hopefully because uh, we just logged our work and I'll probably refresh the issue. Sometimes I get this message on the on the screen that uh, this issue has been uh, updated by automation rule but not always. It is not really consistent. Okay, so now I can see here that uh, you have uh, the, I mean, we, we didn't really add any comment. So I think if you just add, uh, if you're just using a uh, work log, smart value, it won't, it will display the comment, but you can also access the time spent. And this can be useful if you want to maybe do something else with this number, maybe you want to send it somewhere else. Uh, you can actually, you can actually call external REST API and you can send this number. But what I wanted to show you is that you can actually fetch this. Now, I also want to see if uh, we can update this and uh, if there is any change. So let us say if I change my two hours to maybe three hours, I'll, uh, this is my work log comment updated. So what I'll do, I'll log it and it will uh, hopefully show me the, uh, the updated number because the rule should have been uh, triggered because we are using all these three operations create update and delete and uh, not yet no uh, so there is no trigger yet um, let me refresh it one more time because we did update I think we are uh, in a rule we are talking about uh, all the work log operations we are basically uh, I mean, when it when it says all work log operations, it it means uh, created, updated, and deleted. So let us go back to the issue, and uh, no, so no no trigger uh, in this case for the update for the updation. I look at the audit log, and I can see. So there is one more. Um, so no new comment was added since the issue has been commented before. Okay, so. I think in I think the the trigger uh, didn't add a comment. I mean, I think it was triggered, but the comment was not added. Maybe uh, I'll check. I'll just check it. Okay, so it says uh, prevent duplicates by only adding this comment once to a particular issue. Okay, let us uncheck it and save it, and uh, let us now update the work log. So we will update probably the other one, the recent time log. So I'll uh, update uh, the number here, four hours, and I will add uh, another log up updated and click on the log button. We'll uh, wait for the rule to, to work on the issue. And yeah, we can see this uh, uh, comment and we can also see this updated entry and I believe if, if we delete the log it will also trigger I don't really want to trigger too many rules because uh, if you look at your uh, usage I mean if you're using the free version of Jira always keep an eye on the execution so I still have uh, uh, okay so it says uh, rules will trigger until your until you until you reach your monthly limit so your monthly limit resets on 25th of December. So I'm doing good. I still have uh, like more than 200 uh, 
executions left so good to know so that is that is all i wanted to check so i think i have couple of more days to play with the rules and i, I think i have a lot of executions left so keep an eye on the number of executions based on the plan so this is all i wanted to talk about uh, in this video uh, we have been talking quite a lot about uh, doing the doing these automations uh, using of course automation in jira of course we are looking at the cloud version of jira because uh, because we have to because we have to now uh, make sure that we can do automation on cloud on jira cloud but the good thing is that you can i mean um, if you were using jira server version and if you are now moving to cloud uh, i think with the combination of uh, these automation rules and of course if you want to do a bit more if you want a bit more control on the automation rules you can always uh, use your own scripts so uh, we also have script now for jira on cloud that uh, uh, of course i prefer it <laughs> Uh, because uh, I mean, when you have the option to write scripts, you have more control on uh, what you want to do. So we'll we'll continue to explore uh, these automation rules, and uh, and uh, I hope you are uh, enjoying these uh, videos. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.